if we want to look at it as big lean green dude bashing a bunch of aliens saves the girl saves the galaxy yeah i mean absolutely we can we can look at halo like that i think that there's a lot of subtext that gets lost along the way uh, mm-hmm. some of it even goes into the books and stuff as well such as did you know there was a elite and a grunt that was hunting master chief throughout the entirety of combat evolved And welcome to the Autumn Colors Podcast, the podcast where, back in my day, we didn't have any of this fancy schmancy audio setups. We had chairs, two chairs, and a speaking ball for the whole group. And we had to share the speaking ball. I'm your host, the AI with ADHD, the Art Sozo Show. And today I'm joined with a special guest, a fellow content creator and a veteran of the Xbox Live chat, Kaiju Kip, if you'd like to introduce yourself. So it is a uh, Kizuna Kip as of the rebrand. You're all good though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I am a self-proclaimed dingus on the internet, banned from many kitchens. Generally, I deal with reactionary content, kind of adding things to a lot of things, having a lot of commentary. But I also do specialize in things like uh, SCA combat, sword combat. My preference is longsword and or sword and board, as well as dealing with firearms content, something that I'm very passionate about and do stress on uh, safety, security, and uh, education when it comes to those. But uh, generally, you're all around nerd. Other than that, okay. Thank you for that. Okay, so yes, um, today, uh, for those who don't know or don't can't really see or anything, we are going to be talking about Halo. So pretty much to go down, we're just going to be just going through more so of our experiences with Halo, our history with it, what we think about it, and so on and so forth. Just gushing about this and everything but uh before we get to that first things first i do have to ask how are you doing i'm doing pretty great honestly it's uh been a day i actually went out to uh, one of my favorite stores shields oh. not sponsored by them obviously <laughs> but i uh, got out did some stuff looked at some stuff and uh you know just kind of brainstorming new stuff to do yeah okay sounds nice yeah uh my folks left for the weekend so uh they gave me the car and pretty much some money for groceries so I took care of that this morning, and uh, yeah, I'm 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 feeling pretty well. Nice, good to hear. Yeah, yeah. I I usually like asking that question whenever I do this because I I think it's always important to ask you know just how people are doing. Oh, absolutely. It comes down to building that rapport and everyone feeling comfortable in the room. I totally get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with that said, uh, I think we can get into the meat and potatoes of this and. Uh, more so just talking about Halo. So, uh, more so if you'd like to sort of just talk about, like, your history with Halo, just your experiences with it, how you got into it, or just, like, just generally just your overall, like, just time spent with this series. Well, that's going to be kind of a multi-part just kind (laughs) of answer, if you will. So (laughs) bear with me for a second. Uh, Halo is one of my favorite game series. It definitely ranks there in the top three, three to five. And I mean, I uh, playing this as long as I was playing modern games. I grew up, you know, with Nintendo stuff, grew up on a 64, grew up on a GameCube. And it really wasn't until, you know, I was able to get, you know, the Xbox uh, 360 Elite when that came out, right? The thinner one, the more angular one with the touchscreen button or the the touch power button. Mm -hmm. So I did unfortunately miss a lot of Halo 3. Um, Mm -hmm. Just, you know, money, things like that. Mm -hmm. But. I remember booting up Halo 3 at a buddy's house when because they had a 360, mm-hmm. and that interesting. If you remember, even the boot up your you know 360 copy of Halo 3, boot up your backwards compatibility Xbox One copy of Halo 3, mm-hmm. and just let that menu sink in. And I'm sure that those that can go back to Halo 1 or Halo 2, uh, memories of those title screens to have a similar effect. Yeah. You you hear the Gregorian chanting. Um, the presentation is just very good. You go to the menu and there's just a lot of features that, in my opinion, uh, was a good move for the gaming industry. But it kind of started to peter out there. Uh, what I mean specifically, you have your campaign, obviously. You had your couch co-op. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have your multiplayer, right? Meat and potatoes. A lot of Halo players. I myself personally am bad at it, but always find it enjoyable. We also had customs, forge, and theater. And those are things that, in my opinion, set Halo apart from everything else in its time yes halo is a story about aliens and you know the big green dude beating down the baddies beating down the aliens saving the universe right yeah Mm -hmm. we cliche we can say but what sets it apart is 
even going back to it today, I mean, there's a lot of uh, themes uh, in regards to very sensitive topics. Uh, you know, the humanity distrusting uh, what becomes the Swords of St. Helios in uh, 343 lore, you know, um, the Arbiter and his uh, allies um, coming together at the end with Lord Hood and being able to overcome that species gap, so to speak, to be able to trust one another, to be able to work together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have very heavy topics such as Cortana, um, you know, finding Cortana, finding your friends, saving them, uh, fighting the ancient galactic evil. Which, by modern lore, is the uh, uh, the first precursor being corrupted into the first grave mind, um, and even there's also a huge lore uh, foray that you can take into it. Whether you stick with just the prior Bungie lore, whether you stick with the three four three lore, you know, it, it, there's stuff for you to you know dig up, and it really respected a lot of players' times because that's how we got things like Red versus Blue, was with Forge, with Theater, things like that, and back in you know 2007 2009 with three i was calling this is gonna this is gonna be what sets us apart and it really does to this day we still have games that don't have forge mode we still have games that don't have theater mode and people keep coming back to reach to halo 3 and why is that i think a lot of that has to do with how complete in box it is and then some mm -hmm. okay so that's that's kind of more of the you know introductory kind of aspect of that. I mean, there's obviously the community aspect of that. As somebody that's been on Xbox Live for a number of views and heard <laughs> heard some conversations and people say some stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I think Halo becomes a perfect storm where you had the community, you had the just unfiltered raw experience of Xbox Live. Nowadays, right, we can go into a Discord server, right? We yeah. can go to a Discord server as soon as somebody says, you know a slur as soon as somebody says something that's pretty off the wall you know you can ban them you can you know and rightfully so reasonably right yeah. in civil conversations the difference been i know that there's uh was it uh, the actman has a video up on this as well and i do agree with his points where people just used to leave it on the field modern warfare 2 lobbies same era xbox 360 we had people cussing each other out we had people just throwing insults at each other but at the end of the day when they were done with that lobby I wanted to leave hey bro good game yeah good game bro right yeah. doesn't mean that some of the stuff they were saying was okay, but they left it on the field. And a lot of people take that to the next level. And a lot of people just, you know, shout this thing or shout or say something just completely off the wall and unhinged. And they, they actually mean that. And that was towards the latter half, in my opinion, of the Xbox Live era, where people started to just use it as an excuse to be really just awful to each other and not leave it on the field. There is a massive difference there. Uh, so it was part of that raw, unfiltered experience. I mean, you could go into a Halo... Reach was really what I played. I played a lot of SWAT on that. Mm -hmm. Go into a Reach lobby, and you hear someone with a, uh, the smoke alarm in the background. You hear that super hyper-compressed audio from the Xbox mic. You hear somebody just absolutely shouting how their team is dog water and you know, how everyone else is garbage, even though they're bottom of the leaderboard. You get the squeakers coming in, and um, you know sometimes you even get those lobbies where my friend uh, did experience this himself, where sometimes someone will just blast a shit post over the, uh, the intercom, right? Mm -hmm. I think it was like a uh, safety dance. Just everyone starts teabagging the entire match. No, no, no progress is gained. <laughs> no other game really does that. It's a perfect storm of the features it came with, the community that it came with, and I would argue the quality of the community that it came with. Not saying that, you know, COD players are sweaty and that COD players aren't of the same caliber, not by any means. I feel that Halo itself, at least, you know, Halo 3, Halo Reach, you know, those that era did attract a different type of player. Because you had to have cognizance of what was going on in the story, or you had that creative aspect going into Forge, right? It worked different parts of your brain than something like one of my favorite games, Old Modern Warfare 2, where that hit certain parts of my brain that I like. I flex different parts, and the PvP is just different because of the shield system in Halo. And so you combine it with uh, the gameplay, combine it with the complete inbox, combine it with the community, and I do think you have this perfect storm of features and interactivity that really pushed Halo beyond the bounds of what anything at the time was really doing. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Thank you for your input on that. <laughs> Tried to condense it. I'm sorry, it was a little long. <laughs> no, it's 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 perfectly fine. Like I I, I don't want like the last thing I want to do is like interrupt anybody who comes on here or anything. But um, like personally for me, I mean. 
admittingly I don't have like all of those experiences not because like a lack of it because like I'm in my 20s so I grew up like definitely around when Halo came out but mm-hmm. like it was it was always a lack of money like I I grew up with the PS2 and the original mm-hmm. Xbox and we had Halo on that so I remember mm-hmm. definitely just getting on the couch with my brother and we just play Halo and just freaking out over the flood level like that it was you know it, that gave me nightmares for a long time as a kid but um like when it came to some of the like the bigger events of like halo's history like particularly with the community and the online and xbox live and everything i never really got to that side of it i, I it was it was very absent for that for a long while because well for one uh my xbox broke very early on so and we didn't really buy another one and then I was just stuck with Halo on the PC, but mm-hmm. I, I never really kind of got a chance to play multiplayer with anybody. But that said, I had stuff like, like, like you brought up with COD earlier, I had stuff like Modern Warfare 3, I had Black Ops 1 and 2. So I at the very least had some level of understanding of what that age of like say whatever but also keep it mm-hmm. on the battlefield was like. I, I, I'm not uh, like particularly like, yeah, I, I, it's like I have some experience dealing with that at least, but mm-hmm. for a long time it was just like I I felt bad because like my friends would always talk about like the newest Halo game like Halo Two, Halo Three, Reach Four. Like I I always wanted to join in. It's just like I never had the money, and mm-hmm. and then I never really had the hardware for it. Like I tried getting like Halo Two to work on my computer, never really got it to work, and then mm-hmm. I saw like 343 and microsoft were saying hey master chief collection is coming out 2014 onto steam and i'm like cool i'll check that out and like the it just like blew my mind how much i missed out on in terms of like the campaign the story and everything because Mm -hmm. you picture just my most biggest experience is just going from easy mode on combat evolved to just trying my damnedest to beat legendary on combat evolved for years on end and eventually finally getting that w and -hmm. then going from that to round when i'm 15 years old booting up halo 2 on my pc and going wait we can dual wield weapons in this wait we have an energy sword like Mm -hmm. there's so much just i got exposed to when it came to like halo and just how much i've just like been sort of absent with it and you brought it up earlier with like references blue for a long while that was sort of my biggest um exposure to anything like halo related was the blood Gulch chronicles the stuff with the freelancers and everything and you know it has the highs it has its highs and lows and everything of like everything it does it has its highs and lows but it was like the closest thing I had to, like, sort of experiencing, like, Halo on some level. And mm-hmm. then I got, uh, like, just more time went on. I met more people. We started playing multiplayer together, and I started enjoying myself. And uh, more recently, I would say, like, over a year ago, I got myself a Steam Deck where I could be able to start playing more of these games on, like, just a device built for gaming without real issues. And Mm -hmm. I started to enjoy it so much more. Like I started to enjoy multiplayer a lot more. um, And I started to enjoy a lot more of the stories and campaigns more. Like Reach absolutely became by far like one of my favorite games, if not my favorite game out of the entire series. But yeah, Mm -hmm. I I, I cannot like deny just like how good two was, how good three was, how very like heart wrenching and heart tugging four became like Mm -hmm. it was it was just it was so good to me and i was just like i i really enjoyed it i do have i do have some criticism particularly with like the technical issues on the mcc which i can get to later but overall this game i mean it, it on some level it was a part of my childhood and over the years it's been something where it went from being this blind spot of my childhood that i just missed out on to being something where it's just like i look back and i'm like i regret missing out on this but i'm glad that i 
came to it now and I'm glad that I'm able to play now. I'm glad I'm able to enjoy it as much as I do. Right. Well, and better, you know, now than never, right? I, Halo has a lot to offer, not just in the story aspect. And I mean, to be fair, I am consistently in the wrong of the community where I had no issues with Halo 5. Well, well let's I had issues with it. There were a couple story beats, a couple things with that. But generally, 5 is kind of regarded as the wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, you're just wrong if you like it. And I've never said that I thought it was the perfect game. I've never said I thought it was the best game. That's when you start getting to Halo, starts getting contentious. Uh, a lot of people will even say, you know, well, uh, Infinite has always just been better than 5, which I think is, as someone who was there for the launch of Infinite, the pre-launch, that's objectively false in my opinion. Because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't I didn't have Wi-Fi at the time of uh, mm -hmm. getting Halo 5. And uh, I don't know if uh, those that have played base Halo 5 will know what I'm talking about. The, uh, the co-op system kind of sucked. The updates fixed the AI. So doing that on Legendary was a massive just undertaking in base, even you know with your four-player co-op system. But uh, no, I, in Halo 4, even then, people will say, you know, oh, well, you're just wrong for liking Halo 4. And that is unfortunately a result of how 343 kind of shifted things and, you know, how that shift came to be. Mm -hmm. Halo getting potentially a little more just mainstream and more corporate, so to speak. You know, at the end of the day, I think that the actual OGs, the actual legit people, right, mm -hmm. regardless of what you like, are just going to say, cool, go for it, right? This yeah. coming from somebody who is consistently in the wrong side of the argument because I like Halo 5. But the fact that you're engaging with it now does showcase a lot of the rhetoric I, you know, I'll, I'll, st I'll talk about where it is a good game. It, it doesn't have to be over. The times of Xbox Live, yeah, reasonably are over. But yeah. anyone can get into Halo, even if you just play on easy, even if you just play on normal with a with a with a partner uh, with a friend, right? Yeah. You can still experience that to this day, and that's not a lot of games can really claim that. Okay, yeah, and um, like, I mean, in regards to like that whole thing on like what do I like the whole like the most optimal way to play Halo or like what the worst version of Halo is, yeah, I never really gave much of a shit about that because it was just like i mean one it, it's like i i'm a firm advocate in like if the game is fun for me if i have enjoyment for it if like i have good memories around it then what does everyone else who's what does everyone else what they say actually matters this is why legitimately for me it's just like a, a lot of people will disagree with me in saying that, you know, like, oh, Devil May... It, like, for example, Devil May Cry, the reboot, is the worst piece of garbage, and it's, uh, like, a spit in the face for the franchise, but it was just, like, I played Devil May Cry, like, the reboot to completion multiple times, and it was just, like, it was a fun beat-em-up, it was a fun hack-and-slash, it was a fun game, and it's just, like, I also got, on some level, attached to the characters. Not do I think that it is an improvement or a triumph over Devil May Cry 1, 3, or even, or even like, uh, 4 or 5 nowadays. No, I don't. I absolutely don't. But as a standalone game and a good, just time sync it's a pretty decent beat em up and you could absolutely do worse in terms of like halo i mean regarding like i mean four like yeah I, I definitely noticed there was a change in direction especially when it came to the story and everything like i noticed that definitely but that said i mean it for me it didn't take away like from the moments it didn't take away from the story around cortana and her rampancy it didn't take right. away from the forerunners it didn't take away from the story around the soldiers and trying to survive it didn't take away from that for me and i still enjoy it and you know halo 5 i mean yeah i, I personally i don't like it but i mean at that's at the same time it's just like like, who am I to judge somebody when my taste in media has never been perfect? When my well, that's, taste... That's the thing. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you hit the nail on the head. You didn't enjoy Halo 5. That's fine. You're allowed to have your opinion. I'm not saying your opinion is invalid. I'm not, no, no, no. I'm not trying to cancel you. Right? Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people in modernity will miss, right? They'll hear yeah. someone say, well, oh, you like Devil May Cry? You like the reboot? Well, you just have garbage tastes. 
No, it's almost like it's subjective. Yeah. And even then, if I had to sit down for an hour and kind of hash out the entirety of Halo 5, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, I didn't agree with this, didn't agree with this, did agree with this, didn't agree with that, right? Yeah. And come at it from a standpoint of let's have a discussion, kind of like we're having here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't want to do that anymore. And that, that's that's a macro thing. <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll mm. creep that back into <laughs> into the here and now. Okay. But no, absolutely, right? That's That's how the interaction should work. You don't like Halo 5. That's fine. I'm not faulting you for not liking it. Yeah. And we move on. We have a discussion. <laughs> yeah. And I imagine, too, it's just like, this is always something I find just like, and people can say, uh, oh, well, you're coping on this, but it's just like, I find any game, like almost any, just about any game can be fun with other people. So I imagine, you know, if I had the chance to boot up Halo yeah. 5 and I had some, like, good people i could like my crew that i just like gamed it out with and everything i imagine we could have a hell of a time despite what people will say about it despite what people will think about it like we could probably have some real good time like i know some people like i think russian badger for instance who's mm -hmm. made videos on stuff like battlefield and many people have agreed battlefield was a terrible like the battlefield like uh fire or whatever was a terrible game but the chemistry the interactions just the like the in like the engagement that russian badger and his friends have had let let people go oh man maybe it's as fun as it like uh maybe it's fun as it's supposed to what i initially thought but in reality it's like no it's not as fun as i initially thought it's the fact that they are actually just making this more fun and i think i think you do hit on good points with that absolutely mm -hmm. yeah and um like, for Halo itself, I mean, like, personally, it's just, like, I think, like, I've had those, I, I, I know, which, I, I've had what you were talking about, where it's just, like, people don't really want to have, like, uh, arguments, like, I'm, I'm a Persona fan, I, I know that feeling of, like, people who just want to be right for the sake of being right, like, I, I've dealt with the whole stuff around Persona 4, which, yeah, I'm not gonna get into that get into that that's a whole, that's a whole story for another day but it's just like in keeping in terms of halo like i have dealt with people who in terms of the mcc who've said combat evolved anniversary is the best version of anniversary and i just think that is objectively false there are things to like out of anniversary i do think it do they do some pretty good ideas and they have some good concepts but in practice, in terms of gameplay, in terms of visuals, I just, like, I just couldn't bring myself to like it compared to my time playing on the original graphics. And I don't think that, you know, I, I don't want to say that, you know, like, what Saber Interactive did with, like, Halo Anniversary is just, like, they, they absolutely just didn't know what the hell they were doing because, like, conceptually speaking, and even in some interviews that they've had, They've shown that, you know, they had ideas and there was some ingenious ideas like putting new graphics over the old geometry and everything. I think that's that's a pretty simple and ingenious idea. Just the way they went about it when I played uh, Anniversary on the graphics was there were things in multiple times. I have had multiple occasions where I would shoot at an enemy and it would just hit an invisible wall. Switch over to the old graphics. Oh, I hit a rock that was actually two feet taller. Like, I've had those experiences, and it's just, like, stuff like that, and the art direction and how it's handled and everything, and the visual and the lack of visual clarity, to me, it's just, like, that cements Halo Anniversary to me as an objectively worse version of the original game. Mm hmm So that's actually super interesting, because I actually have... Not necessarily the inverse, but my experience with Combat Evolve specifically, it was so different. So, mm -hmm. I didn't actually fin like actually play and finish Combat Evolve until like 2019. Mm -hmm. And the version that I played was actually on MCC. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I kind of have the... I'm ki I kind of come at this from a little bit of a strange angle. There are absolutely objectively wrong things about the MCC port. Uh, very specifically, one of those that I ran into. Um, friend wanted to go play uh, MCC. Uh, they had Xbox. I have PC, obviously. Yeah. To this day, you still cannot cross-play yeah, on uh, that specifically. So that is objectively inferior, in my opinion, and I think yeah. that's a huge L. 
going through MCC, I did like the the, uh, the new coat of paint. I do like the ability that you can toggle back and forth personally. Uh, I think there's merits to each of them where uh, Video Game Donkey goes into detail about Combat Evolved where, you know, you can see things like, you know, the red grunts are, you know, very vibrant, you know. Mm -hmm. You have these elites that are very blue or very red and they kind of contrast the background a little bit. Whereas, you know, someone coming at it from a, you know, more modern perspective, it does get a little jarring to me. Uh, it does feel minimalistic, but to be fair, that's like saying, oh, like Pong is minimalistic. Well, yeah, Pong's minimalistic. Dig yeah. Dug's minimalistic. I mean, it's of the era. And Majora's Mask, one of my favorite games, that is no looker by modern standards, yeah. as it being one of my like top three favorite games ever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I do take that into account when I look at that. I do think that the ability swap was a huge W. Yes. Uh, I did like, I really play it on the, uh, the new graphicals of the uh, anniversary mastered graphics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, it is a good game. I think that if you're looking at somebody to try out Combat Evolved, I think that is your, your gateway in. That is your entry to Combat Evolved. And then I think if you're wanting to specialize and play a, you know, better version, absolutely. I mean, I'd recommend playing on official Xbox hardware, playing the originals. Yeah. This is also coming from somebody that, you know, I have a history in Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I don't hate old graphics. I'll go back and play Pokemon Red. I'll go back and play Pokemon Crystal. I will play XD Gale of Darkness and Coliseum as blocky as they are. Yeah. And it's fine. I enjoy it. So graphics don't mean everything to me. Yeah. And I absolutely see the criticism when it comes to uh, critiquing the old versus critiquing the new. Good idea. Absolutely. I think that you're right. But especially when you're saying that there's issues with geometry and overlapping textures, especially in the anniversary, that becomes a game problem. And that is a little bit of a miss. Yeah. And personally, it's just like, it, like on top, on, to kind of wrap this around to like graphics. Yeah. Personally, yeah, I'm in agreement with that where it's just like, I don't think graphics are uh, a really important thing. I think there was, um, I forget who said this, but I think there was a quote from a developer who said at some point, this is like years ago, at some point, graphics are going to hit a breaking point where the graphics themselves don't really matter all too much and people are not really going to care unless the game itself is interesting. And so, I... like, when it comes to, like, personally for me, the biggest thing I look towards in terms of what makes, like, a really good game are three particular things and that is the audio in terms of like the music or just the sound design. Then it's mm -hmm. also the gameplay and sort of like the, just the gameplay loop and the investment and whatnot. And third and most importantly, it is the art direction. Just yeah. like it, it, in terms of being like a first person shooter in a catalog of so many first person shooters, many of which Call of Duty and Battlefield sort of triumph in the number of sequels they've had and the number of remasters and remakes, so on and so forth. When it comes to Halo, it's just like, you, you like there's a big question. It's just like, how do you differentiate Halo from all these other games? And I feel like Halo, in objectively, I think Halo has some of the best art direction to not only differentiate itself from all the other FPSs in the category without like going into specifics but it also makes it more in its own way more memorable it also like in its own way brings its own flair and own enjoyment and investment to newcomers who play the game and everything and so mm -hmm. i think like yeah i mean i mean personally yeah still i i like i i think that yeah objectively i personally think that anniversary wasn't really that uh, enjoyable for me to play but i mean that said i mean like i like you said yes you can toggle back and forth between the original and the new graphics so yeah like if i like i feel like that would have been more of a major issue if they went sort of like what disney does with some of its re-releases or remasters where they will like sort of just like the re remaster of like cinderella where it just sort of really did a number on the original animations and the original film to the point where it's just like you look at the original and then you look at the remastered like left to right and you notice some pretty glaring differences in everything and you, you bring up a good point honestly like that is a this can also bring up with the community the idea of retcons as well when mm -hmm. you start doing remasters and stuff like that 
I don't know if you remember Halo 2, uh, where Chief meets the Gravemind. I don't know if you remember the original versus the anniversary cutscenes for Halo 2, you know, the blur Halo 2 anniversary. Yeah. I so, uh, in China specifically, uh, they had to uh, zoom in on it at a certain section because, you know, Gravemind uh, censorship, right? Mm -hmm. But because they zoomed in, we can kind of see that the room the Gravemind is in, it looks like the control room from the first Halo game, right? So that would mm -hmm. be the uh, Delta Rings, you know, control room, where in the original Halo 2, that's not necessarily something that you'd probably catch on to or wasn't even probably the original intent because Halo 2 was made under crunch period. It was made under crunch. Oh, yeah. So when you start dealing with remasters and stuff like that, and specifically remasters because remakes are a different thing, mm -hmm. you can run afoul of the community in certain aspects depending on the game because you could be seen as trying to change certain things. So say if you if you play through Halo CE and a certain wall is just blank, right? Yeah. But you go back and that certain wall is now, say, Forerunner architecture or sh maybe it's shockingly Covenant architecture. Wouldn't that rub you the wrong way if you're like, but this looked like Forerunner architecture? Why is... Or, or, or even going the Halo Infinite route, this mm -hmm. is Forerunner... Arch Halo 1's like Forerunner like builder architecture where Halo 4, Halo 5 is more like Forerunner like war class architecture, right? Yeah. Um, that's why we see the shift back into the Halo 1 style of Forerunner architecture going in Infinite. Well, now you're playing through Halo CE and remastered, and maybe this is like uh, Forerunner war architecture, and it's just jarring to you. Do, you know, do you think you reasonably would be upset by that? Yeah, I think I would, on some level at least. All right, yeah, it, it can run afoul in certain aspects, and that's the danger of remastering certain things. And I think it's, especially doing content creation, you're never going to please everybody. You will say something, you will do something, people are going to be pissed off at you. Yeah. As long as it's reasonable, I think that's what a lot of people care about. And that's why, why, why games like Destiny 2 end up going under fire for a lot of things. But that's a whole can of worms in itself. No, I think you bring up good points in regards to uh, your opinions on why it's an inferior copy. Yeah. yeah. And it's like... um. It's interesting to bring up, like, the whole thing around uh, Halo 2, because when I played the MCC, like, it was, like, it, again, mind you, I was like, I, I played CE for so long, and then it's just kind of jarring <laughs> for me, because I go mm -hmm. from Halo 2, we have these new cutscenes by Blur Studios, and it's, it's a full, it almost acts like a full-length feature film, and it's such an upgrade, and then Halo mm -hmm. 3... Like, I know Halo 3 came out after 2, and it's a dated game, but you go from HD, sort of, like, kind of the... It, it kind of felt, like, very, uh, I would say, sort of, like, J.J. Abrams Star trek in some level, uh, in a good way. And mm -hmm. then you go to uh, mid to late 2000s Xbox 360 era of Halo, and it's... It's not bad, but it's just it, it, it feels like tonal it feels like whiplash to me. <laughs> uh, well, and that's something that I have to actually look up myself. I thought there was a way on MCC to view the original Halo 2 cutscenes instead, but it might just be blur. I don't necessarily think that's a fair comparison because yes, while Halo 3 did come after two, mm -hmm. I mean you have to compare that by Halo 2 cutscenes. That's we we don't have a Halo 3 anniversary, we don't have a Halo 3 remaster. I know many people in the community have been clamoring for one and you know I, I would play that. When you talk about and this actually starts segueing into a conversation about how each Halo game is kind of tailored to a specific audience. Mm -hmm. Where if you want your your Magnum play, right? You want your CE Magnum play, you yeah. want your bullet hose, you know, you're gonna play Halo One. Halo two is going to be very dual wield focused. It's going to be a very aggressive game. You're still gonna be kind of playing while well, we getting to Halo three, how it's more of a game of chess. Yeah. But you have this tactically mo tactical movement type system where you're working with your team and you have that aggression because you can say dual wield needlers and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um beam rifles, you know, feel really good and that and so that caves to another kind of player. Halo 3 is actually, having played Reach, having played 4, having played 5, having played Infinite, right? Hey, 3 is still my favorite because mm -hmm. it feels like slow-moving chess. You're moving as a team. You're moving as a unit. You don't have a sprint option. You are, yeah, you can do some lone wolf stuff. Absolutely. You can go 20 and 0. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But you can work with your team on, say, something like Snowbound or Sand Trap or Sandbox uh, Epitaph, one of the bigger ones, uh, Guardian even, you know, you can work on those playlists to ha work with your team to rotate the map 
and keep getting your enemy team off spawn. And so you just roll this value all game in this circuit. Halo Reach, in my opinion, uh, with the sprint, some of the armors, especially the famous armor lock, as Russian Badger has a video on. Love that video. Yeah. Uh, you start getting into some things, you know, where you can do some lone wolf stuff. You know, you can be that difference to, you know, have a wraith charge you, and then you armor lock the wraith, and then you just destroy the wraith because you armor locked it, right? Mm -hmm. um, a SWAT and Reach was one of my favorites. I mean, yes, you still did have access to to sprint um but i mean it just depends if you want to use it or not i mean i've done a number of community streams where we did play swat and I don't, i'm not bad at swat mm -hmm. it, it attracts in my opinion just a different kind of player than say three does four uh you have some you know new weapons you have like the railgun and stuff like that yeah uh, railgun new bxr because we don't have the dmr in there anymore and we do have the, we have both the dmr and the bxr in four so that's actually a good talk and honestly i think four's gameplay is very tight yeah five tried to be a little more floaty i actually still think five objectively has better multiplayer from a stability standpoint but as well as just mm -hmm. a cohesive standpoint it was still a still more halo than it was call of duty but you know five attracts a specific kind of player if you want a spartan ground pad you can if you want a spartan charge you can are they necessarily good options no but you do have the ability to and it did feel a lot more fast paced than something like four or reach infinite comes down to you know it's the modern live service experience and I, I personally can't stand that the netcode still suffers two plus years out, but that's mm -hmm. just a me thing. I can't, but, but my buddy had it bad though. Like he lives pretty close and he lives in the state of the, uh, of the West coast server and, you know, he'll fire a rocket at their feet and like they won't take damage, but then he just absolutely just gets got. And, you know, having experienced netcode, um, desync, at a certain point, the the fix that was pitched to me is just like, yeah, after several games, you just got to restart your entire game. Personally, I'm not into it. And even then, we see after Season 5, they've kind of petered out in support for Infinite. But yeah. it is the current experience. It does have a lot of Forge options going for it. It has a lot of customizability. Mm -hmm. So you see how each of these attracts a different type of player, though, yeah. where you can be attracted to CE, but you might not necessarily be attracted to 5. And that's fine. Each yeah. game feels unique enough and the weapons that it offers that absolutely someone could be like you know what maybe i don't like stores for but you know what at least we got the dmr and the bxr in this and they both feel good mm -hmm. to use or you know someone's a pro back in the halo three days you know and they used to run with their squad they used to you know be really high ranked back when rank uh, degeneration could happen back in halo three mm -hmm. you could actually lose rank with enough losses which is a feature we don't see in modern times and you know, they could still play Halo 3 to this day. There are some still OGs that play on games like Call of Duty World at War on PC. Mm -hmm. There's some OGs that play TF2. There's people that will play Halo DE. And mm -hmm. they each fill a specific role. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, like, like uh, there's some other stuff I do want to talk about. But it's like, to clarify about the whole... Uh, yeah. and to, to clarify to anybody who's, like, getting on me in, in this about the whole... What I was talking about with Halo 2 Whiplash and everything. Um, I, I'm very much referring to the first time I had an experience about it and before I realized, oh, I can just switch over to the graphics. Because, like, the first time, yeah, like, I went from Halo 2 Blur Studios and then to Halo 3, yeah, I got a Whiplash. But then when I realized, oh, wait, the, no, the original graphics are on 1 and 2, I started playing with those and then I realized that, yeah, I it, it, there's more, like consistency and like there's a natural increase in like the graphics like um and definitely um most most notably it's just like despite how much of a horror story that halo 2 is in terms of development because there is in a lot of talk even from uh like a number of head developers who worked on the project and everything who've said yeah, yeah no no game should be lumped in with uh, halo 2 crunch most notably uh, Marty O'Donnell, which, for the record, um, yes, I am aware of the recent, like, news in regards to him. It's just, like, I, I just want to say this right now. I I'm not a politics channel. I'm not here to talk and get into detail about politics. I'm here to talk about the game with the hot AI and the big man with the gun I'm, I'm not here to i'm not here to get into details about this marty o'donnell made a lot of great music for the series i don't think just because he was a music composer automatically everything he sh he said or 
will say should be taken to heart in terms of being like it's law or anything so i actually have no idea what you're talking about i didn't hear any of those i'll do my own independent research on that yeah until you said something i don't even know (laughs) i i I didn't even know this until like uh i heard like i was because i'm i'm a fan of um noodle in his content and there was a point where i think i forget a video where he was like Someone asked him, like, do you regret any of the videos he did? And one of the videos was just, like, an interview with Marty Martin O'Donnell, the music composer. Let's, uh, on this because... Yeah, like, I, I just... Good, yeah, right? I just... I don't I don't want to get into it. Like, if, you, if you're no, curious, yeah. do research on yourself. I, but just, like, I... Just... I, I'm not... I, I don't... Just be... Like, separate the said, art from the I artist. My, separate the I art will from do the my, I will do my own independent research. Yeah. We are good. Yeah. Just like to everyone, just I separate the art from us. That's that's the point I was trying to get across. But anyway, moving no, off of that. Beyond that. This is not the discussion for this. Yeah. This moving beyond about this. Show, and strictly for the game. Yeah. I, I, know. I, I just want to say that because I know there are going to be people who are like, oh, man, you brought up this person. Well, did you know? It's like, I, I, yeah, I know. I'm not here to talk about that. Our, like we're here to talk about long time ignore them at that point if they're yeah. going to come for an argument they're coming for an argument just ignore them but yeah continue along with halo in yeah, regards anyway. to uh yeah functionality game yeah the functionality game and um honestly um i think the one thing i do like love most about this regardless of um sort of like the gameplay changes or differences objective and everything i think i love the most out of this is just we, we've kind of been sort of skirting along it but uh, the story of halo is it's honestly it is pretty black and white but at the same time where it lacks in like i guess a sense of nuance or like complexity that you would see in like video games nowadays essentially it makes up for for like it's honestly really good character writing it's world building the lore around halo just the characterization the amount of books that are just on the series alone and or i think still are being made around it is just it it blows my mind continuously that just like how vast of just a threshold of story this is like to this day I don't know how people feel about it, but to this day, one of my favorite properties around Halo, just period, is the animated miniseries Legends. Just the different stories, the different specials, like the different amount of like tales we get following the universe of Halo. Most notably, my favorite one is Odd Ones Out, where we get a Toei animated special, where we get um, just a Spartan in sort of like a akira toriyama rest in peace like sort of an esque type interpretation of it and it's 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 both funny it's simple it's goofy but at the same time it has this like sense of charm that halo has to it and i really enjoy it so i actually want to kind of inquire so when you say that the narrative is pretty black and white like i would like explain that extrapolate on that i'm curious uh your thoughts on that in terms of it i would believe it's just kind of like the biggest like black and white thing to take from it is just like aliens bad aliens sort of like the bad guys or aliens and parasites are sort of the bad guys and the humans are the good guys now i know as time has gone on it sort of has like moved away a little more from that like definitely uh in halo 3 we sort of had more like alliances towards the flood i know about that and but You know, like, going back to it, it was very much in the sense of, like, like, in terms of, like, the the Flood itself, there wasn't really, in terms of how the game played, there wasn't really much of a, like, complex standing to it. They were, like, it was this, it it was this, uh, like, it was this organism, this, like, sentient being that... It only existed to devour any and everything that it was capable of. And this is and this built into why Halo exists and why the Forerunners built it. Is because they knew they could not stop the flood. The only way to do it was to starve them to death. That was yeah. what Halo Combat Evolved clearly pointed out. And this is where I kind of get where it's just like Halo Halo in that regard to me has always been like black and white, but that said, it's just like I don't get on it because it's just... I don't really, like, praise it because, oh, it's black and white, and therefore it should be like... I, I praise it because 
despite its very more simplistic story in a number of ways in terms at least in terms of the games there is a lot to be had here there's a lot of great character moments there's a lot of great characters there's a lot of great storytelling and in a lot of ways there's like there's a lot of great visuals to come with it like yes it is a first person shooter it is like you're you're sort of like out in your space it is is space marines out defeating like parasites in space but it's, it's like nowadays it's just like i look at like what we have in sort of the same vein and everything it's just like there is to me there's just nothing like halo like halo is it's in its own way its own entity like yes we will have copycats we will have people that go like try to do what halo does but it's just to this day i still see halo as just its own thing like something that can't really be recreated well i think you're absolutely right on that in terms of a if we want to look at it as big lean green dude bashing a bunch of aliens saves the girl saves the galaxy yeah i mean absolutely we can we can look at halo like that i think that there's a lot of subtext that gets lost along the way uh, mm -hmm. some of it even goes into the books and stuff as well such as did you know there was a elite and a grunt that was hunting master chief throughout the entirety of combat evolved i've i believe the I've elevator the elevator, I think, at the end of the second to last mission, I think uh, he pops up the elevator because there's like one red elite and there's one a, a mm -hmm. grunt, and they just show up. And they, but they had been hunting you all, and that that goes into the book stuff. Mm -hmm. You go into Halo Two, and the opening cinematic is the duality between Chief uh, and uh, Johnson being crowned heroes, while the, there's the duality of the Arbiter being declared a heretic and being branded as such, being branded yeah. and reborn as the Arbiter, which if we want to get into the uh, sense of identity, right? He is no longer Thelvadam. He is no longer who he was before. He is the Arbiter. He is a different entity entirely. Yes. So uh, there is that. There is the, uh, the the subtext, the plot points where you have the prophets who are, you know, commandeering this cult effectively from the shadows, the Covenant, and, you know, the Arbiter gets wise to it. You have Donkey Kong. You <laughs> have uh, Tartarus, right? Uh, yeah. ends up trying to assassinate the Arbiter, and that leads into this the whole Covenant schism. Uh, there's very, a lot of religious connotations behind it. There's a lot yeah. of uh, manipulation and brainwashing. Even at the, obviously, it was the joke ending of Halo 1, right? Johnson and the Elite hug each other, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which shows that, you know, maybe they're not so different after all in the face of overwhelming danger. Even if we take out the whole precursor, last precursor becoming corrupted to become the first Gravebind, becoming the Flood, right? Even if we take that plot point out entirely, Liu view the flood as if you would the borg i have not seen all of tng i've seen up through the initial uh, input of the borg and know of them as a plot element mm -hmm. but how do you defeat the borg you don't the yeah. borg are there the borg will always be there and you just have to kind of do your best to just not get in their sights and yeah so you look at halo and it's like okay we're going to open up this uh cache and the elites you know get sucker punched by you know this plague that was stored there and then johnson and co end up going in halo ce and they end up unleashing it as well and then the whole ring starts getting infected hence why the ring destroys itself because self-destruct yeah and the, it's okay to have a simplistic villain. Yeah. It really is. It's why I like Xenos from Final Fantasy XIV. Mm. Dude has a single ambition. I want a good fight. Yeah, That is his whole ambition for every single thing that he does. Yeah. But if it's written well, that's fine. I think that Halo... You can go into it and you can just blitz it and be like, haha, played funny Halo Doom clone. Because everything used to be a Doom clone. right? Everything's yeah. a Dark Souls clone now, but everything used to be a Doom clone. Yeah. Haha, played funny lean green machine doom clone kicked a bunch of alien butt you know came home but you can also look at you know on a deeper level you know why are we here what's going on you know uh oh well Thel uh, Thelvadom is up in orbit right now you know and we're fighting alongside him in two and then he you know comes to his revelation you know uh the the secrets of the rings there's a lot more that you can dig into and even then one of the most controversial points that i have personally the ending of halo 4 where the didact falls he doesn't die. He falls into the slip size portal beneath the composer. Mm -hmm. And he ends up on, I don't remember which Halo ring it is, but he ends up in another Halo ring. And he makes a, uh, a bargain, kind of strikes a bargain with the monitor of that installation. And this all takes place in comics and books where you have Blue Team go there, so Chief, Linda, right? Yeah. They go there. 
everyone else gets bodied. Chief's the last one standing there, and the Didact then gets composed, to which I guess there's back and forth if the Didact could have been composed or not, and that might be a retcon, which, you know, is something that a lot of people call out in uh, regards to modern Halo lore, Mm -hmm. Uh, and to which we had a new book earlier this year in 2024, where we have, I guess, the conclusion to his arc. Mm -hmm. So... Does everyone need to know about that? No. Does everyone need to know about after Halo 5, you have Chief and Arbiter talking on a cliff ed- on that cliff edge? I felt we got robbed of it in the game, personally. Mm-hmm. But no, it's not necessary. It's much like, well, do you need to know that Feynor crafted the Silmarils? Do you need to know that he crafted the Palantiri and that yeah. the reason that the gift to Gimli is as relevant as it is is because she denied Feynor, Master Craftsman, a single golden hair, right? Do you need to know that from the Silmarillion to enjoy the Lord of the Rings? No, it's a complete coherent story without all the extra stuff. Yeah. And I think that's what sets Halo apart because you don't need to buy this expansion. You don't need to buy this. Now now it helps to have the books and kind of things, but you yeah. can sit down in Halo 3. You can sit down in Halo CE and have a complete experience in front of you. Yes. And like it's interesting you bring that up because there's like there's a number of games that just were in my head where it's just like it's kind of in the similar vein like you brought up doom earlier like that doom also has its own novels and like yeah you can just like in in a similar vein where it's just like with halo combat evolve for instance i think what uh for me what made it like sort of click in my head as this is something different this is not call of duty this is not battlefield this is not doom this is this is something entirely like this is his own beast was just how it was handling its story because yeah like i i could definitely just go into like i don't know i could just boot up halo combat evolved just tomorrow or something and then just start throwing grenades around then just start going like full rambo and everything i could do that or mm-hmm. I could just go on and start appreciating the more quieter moments. I could get more methodical with how I play the game or encounter enemies. I could like sort of take my time and sort of just appreciate like just sort of what the game has in store. And I've I've tried doing that before, and it always oh, sorry. I've I've tried doing that before, and it's like it it's. You know, at times it has, at least when I first did it, it fascinated me just because of how, it's just how unique it feels. Like, because if I, if, like, to bring it back, like, if I were to sort of do this similar thing of how I approach Halo in terms of being more different, if I were to approach it more in, like, another first-person shooter, it would be more so, like, just, it's very likely that the game would just be, oh, yeah, it's an active war zone, you have to kill or be killed, it's just, it's just, things are exploding, you have to get out, and it's just, like, this, like, event after event after event after event, but with, like, Halo Comedy Evolved, there was one point when I was very young, where it's just, I got lost at a certain point, it was just on the mission of the silent cartographer, it was just driving alongside the beach, I didn't know where to go, but... In yeah. that, another one, yeah, yeah. In that like event of like, I believe it was a genuine hour. I was lost. I legitimately didn't mind it because it was just the the visuals, just everything. It was just it was an interesting experience. It it it, it felt legitimately different. Like it was quiet. There wasn't really many enemies coming after me or anything. It was. It, it, it brought along, like, these different kinds of emotions that I felt. And then when people bring up, you know, like, like you were bringing up about the books earlier and the grunt and the elite, like, when people bring that up, it's it makes me think of sort of, sort of like Kingdom Hearts, sort of like Ruby, where, like, uh, people, the fans, or even the creators will say, like, look, if this doesn't make sense to you, just read the book or anything. And I, and what you, th- what you said, just speak to me, is like, yeah, you can read this, you can catch up on this, you can delve into this, sure, you can do that, or you can just enjoy it for more so what it brings to the table, what it is, or just how you prefer to experience it. And you can still get that level of enjoyment. I can still enjoy Halo Combat Evolve, Halo 2, Halo 3, even 4, and even especially Reach. I can enjoy those stories just as a game. 
and it's perfectly fine. Now, it personally, like, again, yeah, like, this isn't to say if you, like, you should only just play the games. Like, no, no, if you are genuinely, if someone's listening, if you're genuinely interested in the world of Halo, the characters, the just the lore, everything about how massive and just large scale this world is, that I would even say, personally, I think even would rival something like One Piece. I would absolutely say, yeah, check out the books, check out the different media, check out the different forms of entertainment around the games. But if you're just like, dude, I work on nine to five and my boss has been on my ass, I just want to play this game, kick back and relax. I say, hey, go for it. Like nothing stopping you on that. I think, well, and I think you touch upon a subject, which I'm very passionate about myself is mm -hmm. something has to make sure it's worth your time yes so let's something like i do right i teach destiny raids like i teach Raider nightmares i teach uh vaulted glass you know king's fall depending on where i feel people are at depending on how you know comfortable i feel they are with their kit you know i'll teach raids i really don't do you know crota i really don't do uh last wish or garden of salvation just because i don't think a lot of people um that have come out are necessarily at that level and they get a little weird to teach uh if you're not just comfortable with what you're running but you know something that I something that I have a lot of experience in, which is mm -hmm. you could argue technically a successor to Halo because it's Bungie that made Destiny, Destiny Two. Yeah. The Destiny Two for me is a lot of sunk cost fallacy, mm -hmm. and I could technically argue that about Halo as well to a degree. Mm -hmm. But Destiny is one of those games that I have to put in a lot of work to even get a potential payout. I've run hundreds and hundreds of onslaught missions at, mm -hmm. at the end of you know season of uh. Season of the Wish. Mm -hmm. And I still cannot get the Luna's Howl roll I'm going for. But that's, you know, it's just part of the grind game, part of that. That's what that game offers. Something like Final Fantasy XIV is very respectful of your time. You still have to put in the time, but it's very respectful of your time if you're just there for the story or you're trying to get max character levels, etc. Halo respects your time and the fact that you have options. Mm -hmm. You get bang for your buck. If you boot up your copy of Halo 3, Halo Reach, MCC... You have, like I said earlier, you got Forge, you got Theater. If you want to be creative about that, make these maps, make these game modes that people can enjoy, like Duck Hunt, Jenga, right? Stuff we enjoyed back in Halo 3 era. Yes. Uh, if you want to play the story, right? You know, hey, I kind of want to relive the Halo 3 story, which I do every six months or so, right? I'll hop in, I'll play Reach, I'll play Halo 3 on stream mm -hmm. and have a good time with it and relive that story. You can do that. Oh, what? I can play Spartan Ops in Halo 4 with a friend? Ooh, this is kind of cool. This is some extra story. I like what they were going for with this. I'm someone who's never finished Spartan Ops, right? But, like, yeah, it's an option. You also have the meat and potatoes, which is the multiplayer. You can work your 9 to 5, which is more akin to about, you know, an 8 to 6.30. <laughs> That's a <laughs> conversation itself, though. And yeah. you can come home and, you know, it's not like, well, God, I got to go grind Onslaught today. Yeah, we resets tomorrow. We were trying to do Last Wish, but, you know, we just didn't get together this week. There's no stress about that. There's no, well, you know, Dawn Trail's launching here pretty soon. I should probably catch up if you have, if I haven't done the Endwalker post patches. It's I get to hop on, hop into a game of Halo. And I think that's what appealed to it in the 360 days because you had that community around it. Part of multiplayer and why it succeeded, in my opinion, is because you were able to really insert yourself. If you remember, you know, armor customization from Halo 3, you had the Hayabusa set that you yeah. found all the skulls. You had the katana on your back. A lot of people, me included, ran it. Yeah. Uh, me in Reach, I'm a he I'm a scout stand, right? Mm -hmm. Buddy loves his Gungnir. I don't understand why he likes his Gungnir set, but he loves his Gungnir set. Yeah. I like my scout set. You know, a lot of people will like their Mark VI set, and you could do different shaders and stuff in game. And this is why people tout Reach as having one of the best armor customizations, not just in Halo, but in my opinion, in gaming in general, mm -hmm. because you are able to be out there. You're able to be that Spartan mm -hmm. in the game. You are able to use that and able to, you know multiplayer talk with people shit post with people hear people try to say some really awful stuff and realize he's like 10 his mom <laughs> comes in and just starts just being like let timmy what are you saying and then you just get to hear and everyone starts laughing in the lobby right yeah you have that sense of community and everyone was there for a common purpose you could be a ceo you could be a tax accountant you could be an irs agent you could be a dude flipping burgers at burger world right beef mm -hmm. butthead, right you came onto halo and it was it was the great equalizer. Video gaming was the great equalizer. Yeah. Regardless if you made $2 million a year, regardless if you made $30,000 a year, you came on, you could talk with people, you could have a good time, and that's, you know, 
just kind of gone with modern gaming. Yes, yeah. good. Yes, good. No, I mean debatable on how you want to look at it. You know, ESRB, all that fun stuff. But Halo had that community, and it had stuff for everybody. You could be absolutely god awful at multiplayer, but you could still play campaign. Board a campaign, cool. Go create some stuff, and then oh hey, I I created this game mode, and now I can go into multiplayer with some friends I made in party chat, and now we get to play this game together. And it fed into itself like its own ecosystem. Yeah, and uh, like honestly, let's talk about multiplayer games. It's just like it, it like it reminds me. It's just like I I really need to uh, like find more multiplayer games than me and my friends can actually vibe to like i tried to like i i remember i forget when this was but i tried to get into you were bringing it up i, I tried to get into destiny 2 and it wasn't that i was like against it or anything like I, I like i i got as far as like the introduction like seeing the witness and all that like i i got to that and it was like it, the the one thing that held me back was just like i i, I got that on like ps4 when it turned out to be free to play problem was i had to pay their for their membership a month yep and then i was like oh wait like i got a steam deck it's on steam and everybody like is saying that nope it does not work on steam deck so i'm like uh and then i tried it nope it does not work on steam deck <laughs> but i mean like above all else it's just like when it comes to like multiplayer it's like at the very least in terms of like long-term experience outside like because yeah, I've had experience with Call of Duty and everything, yes, but it's not necessarily what I've had, like, long-term experience. For me personally, it's been my long-term experience with, like, multiplayer and just sort of that idea of, like, keeping on a battlefield and just, like, fighting some 10-year-old who just, like, got like got home from school and, like, mom's just coming home. It's like, hey, Timmy, I brought you your pizza rolls. What are you doing on here? It's just, like, I... <laughs> that, for me that has always been like the fgc like the fgc has always been kind of that where you you have a bad day like just you, you just come home and just things are not going right you boot up something like tekken street fighter so capper whatever and you just go to town mashing buttons doesn't matter if you know combos doesn't matter if you know chains doesn't matter like you just go to town mashing buttons and you just are able to get that out of your system and then next morning you wake up and you're just like, all right, well, back to the grind. And that in a lot of ways is just like, is also something I found when it came to first person shooters like Halo, in, even in more recent years, where it's just like, I would come home, like, have to take the train, deal with some drunk knucklehead who is just like, just absolutely like blast plastered out of his like mind and just starting stuff on the train and everything and it's just like i just i just want to get home come home boot up something like halo and just go to town on it and immediately it was just like i get all of that like frustration out and everything next morning i wake up and just like you know what i feel good today i'm gonna go for a walk or something like that and yeah it's just like I think it's like there's a there's a genuine magic to have when it comes to multiplayer games in terms of like in the way I see it sort of like stage multiplayer games as opposed to real life multiplayer games where with what I call stage multiplayer games it's just it's all on the stage it's all on the performance it's what it's in the moment and then after the performance is over after it's all done you're back to your normal selves you just yeah you, you break out of character and everything you just go back to doing what you're doing whereas like with real life multiplayer games it has a very dangerous feeling of just encroaching on just your real life and coming out of it where it's just like i it's just it feels very dangerous in doing that and for me i think like uh a lot like some games I have played in terms of giving that feeling is just like they've they have not really made me feel good but as comp as opposed to like keeping in the same vein like as opposed to like my time playing Halo my time playing COD my time playing games like these it just it it, it it's like there is legitimate moments of frustration infuriation and there's moments where it's just like exhilaration where it's just like i feel so glad i got a quadra kill i got i got kill manjaro i got like i i did so well in that game oh man i just got one shot by the dude with the fucking energy sword but at the same time it was just like 
those experiences growing, those experiences as time went on, it's just like, they became moments where it's just like, I look back fondly and nostalgia and go, you know, those are, those were the good old days. Those were the, those was the gym with the good times. And it just, it, it just brings a smile on my face for whatever reason, even the stuff that, which that pissed me off in the game and everything just, it has this effect on me. And it's just, I don't know. It's just like, that's just, Stuff like this is like, honestly, the stuff like this is kind of why I wanted to talk about Halo with somebody. It's just like, I, and it's just like, there's, there's something I can't ex really, I'm having a, I feel like I'm having a bad time explaining it, but it's just this feeling that I can't explain, but it's just like, I know it when I feel it. I think there's a couple conversations to be had in that. It's one, gaming is going to be subjected to each people. I, I'm not good at Minecraft. There's a lot of people that will swear by Minecraft. I am an okay FPS player. I'm generally on the more PvE side of things. I mean, there's people in the Destiny community that will trounce me. I mean, there's people in... You know, I have a buddy who, playing Halo 3, I mean, he will absolutely just run circles around me. Yeah. There are people like racing games. I'm awful at those. So there is a subjectivity in gaming. And that helps kind of narrow down what you're doing. So, I mean, subjectivity of gaming going into Halo. I think Halo never really focused on the meta so let's go back to call of duty modern warfare 2 same era right 2008 2009 right yeah. uh a dual what was it dual model 1887s pre-patch they were snipers right people using uh you know quick scoping montages for the oh, intervention yeah, right yeah people running all these sorts of meta tricks commando pro is going to be arguably one of the most meta things to run in the game um one of the ones that modded lobbies nowadays actually gets taken out is uh painkiller pro because of the additional uh kill streak uh damage resistance that you get so people even if you have it on it'll just flop to copy couch something like that mm -hmm. so there's a folk there's always been a focus on meta over there and i'm pretty sure there's been a focus on meta and halo i mean some people will probably just say oh no bxr headshot's the way to go ar's garbage why are you not just using the needler nah just use green gun magnum right i mean sure there's people that do that but i don't think it was as prevalent in halo not at least in the circles i was going in and it was kind of just like i have an AR and a pistol, I need to go blitz the rocket spawn. Mm -hmm. You blitz the rocket spawn. Now we have that advantage over the enemy team. Grats, we just got the double. Now they're going to be off spawn. And then we can rotate as a team to keep killing them on spawn, right? And I think that it's that lack of focus on meta and the fact that you did have to go get your power weapons. You, everyone started on the pretty much same playing field, right? Regardless of what game yeah. mode you play and what mod, mod game. Like, if you play all swords, right? Everybody has a sword. Yeah, It's not like somebody has this grapple into a sword and part of the issue with infinite why the sword is so oppressive is not necessarily even the sword's fault it's because of how the movement system works and because um not not grapple but because of how your slide works it gives you so much reach with that yeah so it's not really even the sword's fault halo didn't really ever seem to at least to me fall into these metagame traps in that it was just yes you can use your green gun precision if you want you can use your brute shot right there are things in anything in any system there will always be things that are more efficient or better at doing the end goal right yeah. the end goal here being getting kills what's going to be better at getting kills the rocket launcher the sword sure maybe green gun precision right plasma mm -hmm. pistol magnum dmr etc but ultimately if you're good enough you can be sniping people all day and the way halo runs is because it doesn't function like a traditional fps it is an fps don't get me wrong mm -hmm. but because you have to worry about thresholding right you have to worry about taking their shield down and once their shield is down then you know body shots do only so much where a headshot's going to take it clean off right mm -hmm. it, it has enough going for it that you can not only insert yourself into the game you have a community that in general has been pretty chill yeah, you're going to have your stinkers, but that's every community. We have to comp be fair. Mm -hmm. And that anything, as long as you're good enough, can really be viable. Whether that's you have to play sneakier to get close, or whether you're, you know, just DMR and you're just taking headshots left and right and going quadra, you know, and just basic Slayer, right? Everyone's going to have their specialty. I prefer BXR. I prefer DMR, right? I don't necessarily prefer the assault rifle. I don't really care for it personally. Mm -hmm. So... It's, I think, a number of those factors coming into one to leave a memorable experience. You remember the good times because people were able to have fun where the focus nowadays anymore is new Call of Duty comes out. You need to be running this. This is the meta strat. 
New yeah. Destiny patch drops. New Destiny expansion comes out. Man, why aren't you using this exotic? Why aren't you using this? You know, yeah. this exotic is through the roof. And to a degree, as somebody that teaches raids, right? Especially going through Pantheon. Yeah, maybe we do need the uh, maybe we do need the five or six uh, Titans with Thunder Crash and Parasite on Atrax. Okay, maybe we do need something like that. Or if the skill level is high enough, they can do it. But there are things that are just worse than others. So I think that leads into why it's such a memorable experience. There's mm -hmm. not necessarily all of this pressure on you to do different things. Yeah. You're allowed to play the game, right? Yeah, I would absolutely agree. And that's like, that is, as time has gone on, that is a like ever growing problem I've seen where it's just this, honestly, I'm just going to say it, there's this like feeling of projection that people put upon like the players where if like it's just this is feeling where it's just like it doesn't matter whether or not it is a fighting game it doesn't matter whether or not it's a fps it doesn't matter whether or not it's a gotcha game it doesn't matter like all the genres across the board from how i've seen will have people in every corner going why aren't you running this why aren't you doing that why aren't you using that why aren't you running this and it's just like backseating constantly and constantly and constantly and it, it always just rings to me as just like back when the, those have like those good happy memories just come to mind it was just like when i really could just i felt like i could just do what i want honestly and i felt like i honestly had fun doing it and now like back and forth even though i try to ignore it back and forth i have to deal with uh hearing like just people going basically why aren't you playing this game the way i play it if you play it how I play it, you would be, ha be having so much fun. But what they fail to realize is just, like, you don't get to decide what me or anyone else considers fun. That is for us to decide. And if we want to play it the way that ultimately is making you agitated, sorry, not sorry, but that's just how we have fun. That's just how we enjoy ourselves. And if you don't like it, I mean... Next door, there's someone who's probably playing the same game, like, doing what you want. Or, hey, I mean, since you seem to be a fan of the game, you can pick up the game yourself and enjoy it yourself. It's just, like, there's nothing stopping you from enjoying content with people that have or do stuff that you agree with in terms of how they play it. And there's nothing stopping you virtually from playing these games where it's just, like, you get to play them how you want virtually it's just like but ultimately it's just like when it comes to when it just comes to those whole things of like just people pushing those expectations people pushing those desires for you to do use what use or want way is quote unquote the meta strat and everything it, it just feels like tedious to me it feels tedious it feels stressful at times even if I can try to ignore it and everything, it just feels, it, it, it's just like, yeah, I guess it's just kind of, uh, it, it's just kind of like the, the days of like, just being able to sort of play the game, how I like, like to play it and everything and just have fun, whether it be with friends or whether it just be all on itself, if, if, whether it be in terms of Halo, whether it be the story mode, whether it be multiplayer, just going around, just just go into camps like in halo 3 just go into camps with a tank and just blast in the entrance and just immediately get getting kills until one of my friends on the other team just comes up and drops a grenade into the cockpit and i have to get out before it explodes up it explodes like yeah it's it, ultimately people could go why aren't you running this mess track dude just do this but at the same time it's not going to stop me from having those experiences because legitimately whether or not I am losing, whether or not I'm getting my ass kicked, whether or not I am winning to what many people consider cheap, I'm ultimately at the end of the day having fun. And it's these are moments where it's just like, these are moments I in legitimately enjoy. And that's stuff right. I like to take from games like Halo. It's stuff I like to take from multiplayer games. And it's, and I don't mean this in a bad way. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not, it's not that complex and what let me let me let me actually go into why i say what i say right yeah if i were to take you through destiny right right if right. i'm going to take you through root of nightmares right mm -hmm. 
Right. There is going to be considerations of what we want to do for damage, right? Yeah. First encounter, we're running, just run out of clear. Literally whatever. As long as you can kill that tormentor, I literally don't care what you're in. Run Darcy for all I care. Second encounter, running again. Once again, add clear. Don't care. Probably anti bear. Make sure you got something for anti barriers, but I mean, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Third encounter, planet's going to be the most infamous encounter. Tom Christie's Skeletor LFG video makes that incredibly clear what the average LFG experience is. Okay. Damage phase, not super long. Okay, team, what are we running here today? Rockets is tried and true. We could do something like uh, Divinity Linears, right? And this is going to be nothing to you, right? But this extrapolate, mm -hmm. this, this showcase is my point, right? Yeah. When you play PvE in Halo, you don't have to make these considerations. You don't have to make the consideration back when match game was a thing in Destiny 2, or having to pack hard light, or having to pack solar, because, oh, well, I forgot solar. Guess we're not killing those solar shields this round, right? I mean, it, you could do it with enough work, but realistically, mm -hmm. you don't have to make these 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 same calls you don't have to make these same leaps in logic what you have to worry about especially in halo ce as well because you do have that health meter which you know i'm bad at c let's put it that way mm. I, i've cleared the library on legendary anything else though i can't do for some reason which then people look at me how do you clear the library nothing else <laughs> um you know you have to make consideration you have to pick and choose your shots you need to utilize your cover it doesn't have a cover system like mass effect does but you still have to use rocks right say you're on the first mission down on the ring right yeah. and you come to the first structure right well you got to go take that structure and now they're going to come and surround you and flank you right well you got to make sure you're peeking in and out you got to make sure you're dealing with the grunts got to make sure the elites aren't just going to take your head off right yeah and it's Simplest, more simplistic in the way that you're not having to worry about all these different raid mechanics. You're not having to worry about someone thinking that the wall is two, is uh, sorry, is three again because they don't know how to actually read. Like you, you know, it's a different place to altogether, and you can reasonably do everything. That library legendary run I did, I mostly used the plasma pistol. Like the plasma pistol was actually the MVP. Okay. Which people are gonna look at that and go. Kip, you're an idiot. Why didn't you just use the shotgun? I used plasma pistol and shotgun. Well, why didn't you use this? Look, the tennis ball launcher got me where I needed it to. But you can do that with Halo. That's what you're trying to, that, that, that's where you're going with that, right? You can use yeah. whatever. You don't have to care what the meta strat is. You don't have to care about all these seven different things. I personally, when I play Halo, don't have to keep track of people that don't know how to count to seven in Oracles, right? Oracles and Vault of Glass. If you've played, you know. Yeah. A lot of people don't know how to count to seven. You just can play the game and play it your way, tailor your experience. And sure, maybe someone, maybe your buddy says the needler is good. Then you try the needler. Oh, hey, that's pretty good. But it still might not be your style. As yeah. long as you can do the job, as long as you can clear the mission, that's all that matters. I will say that Halo is very focused on, and Infinite kind of ad addressed this to a degree, you will be picking up new weapons. You yes. will rarely ever stick with your starting gun, at least in CE Legendary. You will rarely be able to stick with your starting gun through the whole mission. Yeah. You will be picking up plasma pistols. You will be picking up stuff, and you will be using it. But yeah. once you understand that, a criticism of, well, I can't use the weapons that I want, suddenly becomes, I'm this badass space marine John Spartan dude that just, you know, does the thing in the Halo uh, infinite opening sequence, right? He uses the grapple hook to grab a pistol and just starts going at it, right? Yeah. You get to be that cool dude that just throws gun aside, grabs new gun, uses it, throws gun aside, grabs new gun, right? You get to keep that going. Yeah, and instead of looking at it as a negative, you look at it as a positive, which is, you know, feeds back into the whole discussion on positivity in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and um, honestly, it's uh, it's interesting like to really hear you talk about this. Honestly, especially when it comes to the matter regarding like raids and everything, it's like. I mean, personally, for me, like, again, yeah, I'm very, I don't know if anyone could tell, yeah, I'm, I'm very much a casual player on, on a lot of levels, but at the same time, it's just, like, personally, I'm not really a casual because I just don't care enough. It's, it's mainly just a lack of, like, motivation and purpose. Like, if I, if I legitimately was put into a game, like, if, if you got me more into Destiny's 2 and we... And you got me into a party and everything. You were teaching me sort of the ropes and everything. And I was legitimately wanting to get good at this game. I could put my mind to it and legitimately, like, follow orders. Find stuff that even I would think, like, works and could actually help on this and everything. And try my damnedest to, like, participate and actually contribute as much as I could to the raid and everything. But if, like, people are just... But if people are just expecting me to have that same mentality, 
put to something where I'm playing in my own time and my free downtime, it's just like, yeah, no, it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm not really going to care. Like, it, it, above, above everything, it doesn't matter if it is Halo, it doesn't matter if it's Destiny. If I don't really have a reason to put my mind to actually, like, learning about new things, and if I don't really have put my mind to actually, like, grinding on this stuff, then, or just actually, f like, finding some new meta strats and everything, then I'm not really gonna care. I just want to play the game how I want to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's perfectly fine. A lot of people get super concerned about how other people play the game. And to a degree, especially in Destiny, where there are people in the top 1%, top 5% of people that will say certain things need nerfs, and I, I feel makes the new player experience just worse. There are absolutely things that do need nerfed in the game, absolutely. As somebody that was walking Starfire Protocol towards the end of Season of the Seraph, and I'm putting out 4 million damage just by no-braining it, right? Okay, maybe that's oppressive because someone higher than me, right, they're, they're going to be able to do some damage with that. But, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're casual. It doesn't matter if you pick up this game once or twice a week. It doesn't matter if you're a uber tryhard sweat that just wants to do meta. When it comes to Halo, especially for the, you know, the era before Infinite, I mean, realistically, anything's viable. Yeah. How do you use it? Is your skill going to carry you? And even then, even if you don't play comp, if you don't play multiplayer, does that get you through the campaign? And that's what's important. I think that's why a lot of people will look at Halo and go, well, I mean, it's not like Black Ops 2 where you had the uh, the, F the FAL, right? The foul, which is banned in comp play because it's just too good. Yeah. You have situations like that where it makes the game not fun for people. Bans are always ever a last resort and a uh, prime example of that. So I, I think that you're hitting all the right notes, though. I think that you're hitting all the right chords on why people like Halo, why people will still go and play Halo, even if they've played it, you know, 20 times before why they'll come back and why they like that gameplay loop yeah 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 and i think um yeah personally like yeah thank you for that and uh, also thank you for like your insight on that and yeah i 100 percent agree on that legitimately it doesn't matter if you are a newcomer to this it doesn't matter if you're a casual to this it doesn't matter if like you you play this game religiously it doesn't matter if you have not play, picked up this game in 10 years and want to come back to it or anything legitimately as someone who like above all else never took this gameplay in the meta all too seriously i legitimately will just say like play how you want your the game specifically like with the campaign in general gives you a problem and a number of options to deal with it and aside from the options that cause you death there's no real wrong option as long as it gets the job done you can go into combat evolved like the the snow level before you get to the command terminal and and boot Cortana in, and then it leads to the flood. You can go through that whole level just in the Scorpion and just blast uh, Covenant on the bridges and everything, or you can just stick to walking. You can stick to the Warthog. You can stick to the Ghost. And hey, if it works for you and you get and it gets the job done and everything, and you're having fun, then there's not really much like to complain about because like hey it's like your own play style it's like you choose your own event you choose your own adventure in that regard and it's just like yeah it's just ultimately at the end of the day what matters most is that you're having fun and this is enjoyable for you oh absolutely and i think that the extension of this becomes well if i wanted to get into halo tomorrow and i'm worried that you know the time has passed you know i'm worried about the triple a games industry i'm worried about xyz abc and i do think a lot of these are valid concerns considering how games like helldivers have gone recently yeah and how much of a headache that's been to really talk about but yeah. what i can say is halo is kind of getting support from the two entities especially MCC, that are pulling modern gaming's weight. In my opinion, and I've been very vocal about this, it is going to be the modding community and the indie studios. These are going to be the two that are going to be pulling modern gaming because AAA, quadruple A gaming, they got the budget, but just mismanagement, management issues, investor issues, shareholders, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, they, they just, they're getting in the way of it. 
And so when you look at Halo, right, we have creators like Inferno Plus that make Cursed Halo. What makes people want to, you know, the amount of times I've had people ask, Kip, when are you going to play Cursed Halo again? When are you going to play this, right? And it's like, yeah, that's, there's a demand for that. And it takes well, everything we've talked about, everything we've talked about, why Halo's good, why people like it, why you should play it, right? Mm -hmm. But it also puts in the, uh, it takes the Forge and it takes theater to the next level with mods in the modding community. And this can also inspire indie devs to either do something with MCC or to make their own projects and give us the, say, next generation spiritual successor to Halo, right? How we have, what is it, System Shock is the spiritual successor to oh i can't remember no bioshock is the spiritual successor to system shock right that kind of thing yeah i think even so. though it's by the name but even though maybe not be made yeah. by the same studio uh, I, or we have games that are just like an homage back to say kingsfield or something like that yeah. this could push the gaming industry forward and it's also like 15 bucks on sale yeah. not paid to promote it's not paid to say that but getting like seven games for 15 bucks is like unheard of nowadays yeah yeah like, the only other thing I could think of is probably, like, the Sega Dreamcast bundle. But even then, I think that's, like, three or four games. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I think that's, uh, honestly, I think that is a pretty good note to sort of wrap up things on. And um, yeah. we, We've done the circuit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Usually, like, I, I'm not going to lie. These sometimes will go on for hours. I think the longest I've gone for, uh, like, a podcast is, like, three hours. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> and, uh, like, honestly, but again, like, just thank you so much uh, for your time and for your insight on Halo. As, like, someone who's, uh, honestly, I will say, someone who has been in this longer than I have and everything. Just thank you so much. Yeah, no, absolutely. It was good to talk about Halo, and uh, it was good to have some points to back and forth on. And I'm glad we did this in a, you know, reasonable time frame for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, by all means, if you want to plug anything or anything or like anything at all, like feel free to right now. Yeah. Well, uh, if you are curious about more Dingus takes, I have the React channel, Kip Reacts. I do got a couple other channels aside from that, the being the Tactic Kip channel, which primarily deals with firearms, firearm reactions. Um, as well as Kazuna Kip, which posted some, you know, post some just meme content sometimes. And uh, if you're ever curious about, you know, me when I'm live, maybe playing Destiny, maybe have some questions about some stuff, you know, Kazuna Kip on over on uh, Twitch TV, you know, stuff that I do. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as for me, uh, a lot of people already know, but uh, if you want to uh, help support me financially, I have kofi.com slash yardsosisha. You can check out my art station and my portfolio where i made this avatar and the setup and everything uh you can check out my instagram subscribe to me on youtube follow me on twitch uh all the links will be in the description below and everything and uh yeah again just thank you so much uh kev for your time in here and hey if uh just putting this out there if you if there's something where it's just like you do want to talk about or it's just like something uh, like we have like free time and uh, you want to come back on to the podcast and everything, by all means, you have an open invite. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. And I'll definitely let you know. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So, yeah. So thank you all so much for uh, joining us today and we will see you all in the near future. So take care and peace. Peace.